Good day, and thank you for checking out the ACS Library. My name is Kyle, and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we will discuss how to find airspeed limitations for the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. For today's video, we will use a 1978-172 November model as our example aircraft. The V-speeds we are going to identify are VNE, the never exceed speed, VNO, the maximum normal operating speed, oftentimes referred to as maximum structural cruising speed, VA, the maneuvering speed or the speed at which we may use abrupt control travel, VFE, the maximum flap extension speed, this is generally also the maximum flap operating speed in trainer aircraft, VSO, stall speed in the landing configuration, VS, stall speed in the clean configuration, VG, best glide speed or the speed resulting in the greatest horizontal distance per unit of altitude lost, VY, best rate of climb or the speed resulting in the greatest gain in altitude per unit time, and VX, best angle of climb or the speed resulting in the greatest gain in altitude per distance traveled horizontally. These limitations will be found in our handy dandy POH. If we open to the table of contents, we will begin our search in section 2, Limitations. We will look for both the airspeed limitations chart and airspeed indicator markings chart. They both give us a few different v-speeds. Beginning with the airspeed limitations chart, we can refer to the indicated airspeeds column as we will rarely know our exact calibrated airspeed during flight. We see that the never exceed speed is 160 knots indicated. Our maximum structural cruising speed is 128 knots. The maneuvering speed is dependent upon aircraft weight. We can explain this simply by thinking that in order for a heavier aircraft to maneuver as abruptly as a much lighter aircraft with the same control input, it would have to enter the maneuver at a higher airspeed. Therefore, the maneuvering speed limitation is less strict at a higher weight. Let's assume that today we are flying near maximum weight, resulting in a maneuvering speed of 97 knots. Above this speed, full deflection of control surfaces may overstress the aircraft. The maximum flap extended speed is also the maximum flaps operating speed in this aircraft. At and below 110, we may operate with 0 to 10 degrees of flaps. To extend the flaps beyond that point, we should reduce our speed to 85 knots. The maximum window open speed is 160. Moving on to the airspeed indicator markings page, as long as we know how to read an ASI, we can find some valuable information here. The white arc depicts the full flap operating range. The lower limit depicts a VSO, or full flaps stall speed, of 41 knots. Below that, we can expect aircraft control to suffer or become non-existent. The upper limit shows max flap operating speed. Above this value, we risk structural damage to the flaps. The green arc depicts normal operating range without the flaps extended. The lower value depicts a VS, or clean configuration stall speed, of 47 knots. The upper value is our max structural cruising speed. Above that, we risk structural damage unless operating in smooth air. As a rule of thumb, normal operation in the yellow arc should be avoided, especially in the presence of any turbulence. The red line depicts our never exceed speed. You've probably guessed by now that we should never exceed this value. These are the V speeds we can identify in section two. Moving on to section three of the POH, emergency procedures. Look for the airspeeds for emergency operations section found just below the intro. Once there, we may find our max weight best glide speed of 65 knots indicated. This speed should result in the furthest horizontal distance per unit of altitude lost during engine out procedures. We will find the remainder of our V-speeds in section 4, in the speeds for normal operation table. Once there, we can find our VY, or best rate of climb, of 68 to 73 knots, decreasing in value as we climb. The best rate of climb speed is the speed that will result in the greatest increase in altitude per unit time. Underneath this, we can find our VX, or best angle of climb, of 59 to 61 knots. This speed would give us the greatest increase in altitude per unit distance traveled. VY is what we aim for when told to expedite our climb to 11,000 feet, for instance, and VX is what we aim for during short field takeoffs instead of the trees at the end of the runway. Under all this, we can also find our maximum demonstrated crosswind velocity of 15 knots. This does not mean the landing gear turns to dust if you land with a 16-knot crosswind component. It just means that 15 knots is the maximum crosswind with which safety of control was demonstrated by the test pilot during certification test for this aircraft. 
These are the V-speeds for a 1978 Cessna 172 November model. The V-speeds should be memorized for the specific aircraft you plan to perform flight training in. As a small bonus, in Section 2 of the Skyhawk POH, under the Placard section, one can find recommended entry speeds for some of the maneuvers. This concludes today's video covering how to find airspeed limitations, otherwise known as V-speeds, for the Cessna 172. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.